Welcome back to another episode of This Month in Health. I'm Liz Ortiz. This month, September, is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. It's all about raising awareness about the risks and to discuss the importance of early detection. It's all about saving lives. The American Cancer Society estimates over 313,000 new cases and nearly 36,000 deaths in 2025. Joining me now to talk more about this topic is Dr. Daniel George. Eleanor Eastley distinguished Distinguished Professor of Medicine, Surgery, and Neurology at Duke University and co-chair of Duke Cancer Institute Center for Prostate and Urologic Cancers. Dr. George, thanks so much for your time today. I want to start off basic. What exactly is prostate cancer? Yeah, Liz, you know, prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers uh, in, in on all of medicine. It's it's the most common cancer in men, and uh, it, it it occurs in about one in eight men in the United States. And there's a higher prevalence in certain populations, patients with family history or patients uh, of, of African descent. It's a, it's a gland we don't talk about. It's, it sits down in our pelvis uh, right, uh, right below our bladder and right in, in front of the rectum. So it's, it's, it's a really, really critical part of our body. And it, it's a, it's a really important gland. It, it helps control our urine control. So it, it helps you know keep your keep your bladder from emptying inappropriately, and it it also makes some really important fluid that uh, helps us make babies. So uh, it's it's a gland we we all you know care about, and unfortunately, it's a gland that's at very high risk for developing cancer over our lifetime. And I mentioned the American Cancer Society statistics. What do those numbers say to you? Well, Liz, those numbers say two things to me. First off, again, uh, there's there's a lot of prostate cancer out there. And that's diagnosed every year. Um, but it also says that most patients diagnosed with prostate cancer don't die from it. We have 36,000 deaths. It's only a small percentage of the overall number of men dying with prostate cancer. And yet 36,000 deaths each year from one specific type of cancer is a lot. It's the second most common cause of cancer-related death in, in American men. And it's a number that hasn't really gone down despite all the advances we've made in cancer and in prostate cancer specifically with new new drugs and, and, and new scans and diagnostics and, and and approaches, we're still kind of stuck on this number. And it's it's largely because we we haven't cut down yet on the um, the stage at which men are diagnosed. Yeah, all the more reason to talk about it this month in particular. I want to go back to who's most at risk for developing prostate cancer. I know you mentioned some specific demographics as well as age groups, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you know, when it comes to prostate cancer, this is a disease that that increases with age. So we, 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 we have seen, it's very rare for men in their 30s to develop prostate cancer. But once men get into their 40s, 50s, and, you know, the rate starts to go up, it really peaks probably somewhere around, you know, late 60s to 70s. Um, the incidence continues. It's just that our populations start to decrease. Um, but we, we diagnose men with prostate cancer right up into their 80s, as as was witnessed uh, recently with our, our former president, uh, Joe Biden. Talk to me about the signs and symptoms that men can be on the lookout for. And are there any silent symptoms that could be passed off as something else that one wouldn't think could be prostate cancer or related to prostate cancer? Yeah, Liz, this is a really important you know, point. And, and that is that prostate cancer usually is a silent disease. We don't develop a lot of symptoms from this. And, and there's a reason for that. Most prostate cancers grow from the prostate art out, not in. In the prostate, you know, where symptoms are going to develop is when it's affecting its function. Remember, I, I mentioned that the prostate gland plays a key role in our urinary control. That's because the ure, the urethra, the tube that drains the bladder uh, in, in through the penis, that, that little tube there, the urethra, you know, it can get pinched by the prostate when the prostate gets enlarged. But the way the prostate cancers typically grow, they grow out uh, laterally and out from the prostate. So it doesn't typically pinch on the urethra until it's pretty far advanced. So if we wait for symptoms, we we are sometimes really late in the game. And it's why prostate cancer screening with a blood test called the prostate-specific antigen or PSA is so important. Um, but, but if you are to develop symptoms associated with prostate cancer, it might be things like going to the bathroom more frequently or 
your prostate stream weakening or um, you know having um, you know changes in your erectile function. These are all um, symptoms that are non-specific. There's a lot of non-cancer causes to them, but prostate cancer is, is certainly one of the concerns when we when we see symptoms like that. And you mentioned that if a man is having trouble going to the bathroom, that it could potentially mean uh, later stages when it comes to prostate cancer. Is that correct? That That's right. Now, it, it could be for benign causes, just benign enlargement of the prostate. That's probably the most frequent cause. So I don't want to panic people. But, but you know, I wouldn't just assume that. If, you know, if you're having urinary symptoms, you need to get them checked out. And checked out soon because, you know, the, the clock might be ticking on a, a cancer like prostate cancer. And it's ability to to spread. And the real key to screening prostate cancer is catching it before the disease has spread. And would you say that over the years, the general awareness about prostate cancer has changed? Are more men coming in saying, hey, should I get screened for this? Are you noticing more people wanting to discuss this? Yeah, Liz, I, I do think that, you know, prostate, there's an awareness for prostate cancer now that that is more than it was certainly when I went into the field 20 years ago. But I'll say this. Um, still men are reluctant to sort of bring this up. And, and I think it's it's kind of natural. You know, when I talked about, you know, screening and, you know, this incidence increasing in your 40s and 50s, a lot of men are still feeling pretty healthy in their 40s and 50s and aren't regularly seeing their primary care doctors. And and, and this is, I think, really one of the, the most important critical messages is that that midlife period between age 40 and 50 it's a critical time for all men, regardless of symptoms, to plug in with their primary care doctor for screening for a number of really important preventable diseases like diabetes, like hypertension, like cardiovascular complications, and like prostate cancer. And by by screening for prostate cancer, we can prevent the lethal form of this disease taking root. And and that's really what it's all about. So how, you know, encouraging men, you know, in, in, in that age group and beyond to regularly see their primary care doctor and bring up, hey, I, I want to be screened for prostate cancer. And you mentioned the reluctance to talk about it. Why do you think that is? And how do you address those concerns? I think as men, we're, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, I don't want to generalize too much, but, but I think that the truth is, is that, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a sensitive issue. Most people aren't wanting to think about their prostate gland every day. And like I do, maybe I'm a little weird, but the truth is, is that, you know, I think for most men, it's, it's unless it's bothering you, we don't, we don't, it's not really on our radar. And then I, I think, you know, cancer is something that we don't talk about generally. We, you know, for people who have cancer, they talk about it, but for people who don't have cancer, it's not something we, we talk about it and we should. Healthcare should be something that that's part of our education and, and it's part of our continuing education as we get older on, on how to take care of our bodies and, and prevention by far and away is the most efficient way of managing these chronic diseases. And, and I consider prostate cancer for, for many men who, you know, who have it and, and we don't cure, it's still a chronic disease. It's the disease that people can live with for many years. So not something to necessarily be frightened of or afraid to talk about or think about. It, it's really something to be aware of and educated around and and to be able to to say hey i want to prevent that just like i want to prevent these other chronic conditions Welcome back. We continue the conversation with Dr. George about Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, which is the month of September. So, Dr. George, what are the current screening tools available when it comes to prostate cancer? I know you mentioned there's the PSA blood test and other forms of screening. So talk to me about that and how effective they are. Yeah, Liz, we've, we've made tremendous progress in the field of prostate cancer screening. First off, PSA, we've, we have so much more awareness of how to interpret the number and it's not just the PSA blood test. The, there's a number of um, factors that we can break down uh, from the PSA. It's it, the amount that's bound to protein and other forms. There are other blood tests, um, other other hormones and antigens or proteins that we can measure in the blood around PSA biology that that are also helpful. In addition, for most men, when we find a PSA that's out of range we can do a scan called an MRI of the prostate that's really helpful in understanding and being able to visualize where the cancer 
might be in the prostate gland and, and how suspicious that looks. And, and that's something that, you know, 20 years ago, we, we were not doing routinely, even 10 years ago. And now it's very routine to have an MRI scan done before any invasive procedures like a biopsy. And we do have prostate biopsies and, and they are, you know, helpful for diagnosing, really mandatory for diagnosing prostate cancer. And we've come a long way in how we do those biopsies with, you know, anesthesia and even with approaches that are different. And at Duke, we have a whole suite dedicated to prostate biopsies, you know, in our hospital. So we have, you know, a, 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 a all the facilities necessary to um, manage patients with whatever anesthesia is required and, and, and approaches and, and really streamline and, and increase the access to this. And these are, these are tests that, you know, I think, you know, we, we take stepwise. Uh, having a, a PSA blood test is the beginning, but it's by no means the end all. It's important to recognize that most elevated PSAs are not from cancer. So it's not a, a, an immediate panic, but it is an indication to do these additional tests and even our biopsies, not all biopsies come back with cancer. So, so this is something that, you know, we, we, we try to educate men around. We, we have uh, patient navigators that work with patients to help them understand this process as they go through it and, and really support our primary care doctors in screening and, and, and educating our patients. So it's, it's very much a team approach. And it's important for people to realize that um, no one test is going to you know, seal their fate. This is a stepwise approach. And, and even the most aggressive prostate cancers that we diagnose today, met, the vast majority of men are living five years or more. So this is, this is not the scariest cancer out there, but it's important to diagnose it so we can increase our cure rates and and take that story 36,000 deaths a year down. Absolutely. And you did mention the typical age to start screenings, but are there any risk factors that would make you say to a patient, "Hey, maybe we should start screening you earlier?" Yes, it's a really good point, Liz. You know, I think, you know, family history is something that we in this day and age of, you know, efficiency and everything kind of cut back on, but it, it's so important for, you know, physicians, uh, primary care and oncologists to to take a very careful and in-depth family history of cancers. And, and it's not just prostate cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancers can be linked to some subtypes of prostate cancer that are more aggressive. So understanding your family history for cancer, talking to your relatives about that, it, it's an important thing to do. And for those patients with a uh, family history of prostate or these other cancers, we do recommend screening uh, a little bit earlier, probably again in that sort of 40 to, to 50 range. For, for our men who are African-American, there's a higher risk of developing prostate cancer in their lifetime and, and, and aggressive prostate cancer. So for that population as well, we recommend screening um, starting at age 45. And, and then in general for um, our population of patients, it's you know somewhere around age 45 to 50, we recommend one PSA as a, um, as a risk test. It's it's not that we expect to find prostate cancer with that first PSA, but that level of your first PSA between age 45 and 50 is is very predictive of, of who's at risk for developing prostate cancer. And just a level above 1.6 is a is a high risk feature for someone who's likely to develop prostate cancer, you know, over their lifetime, eight times more likely than someone whose PSA is less than than 1.6. So so it's, it's a really important, you know, for these men, one, to see their primary care, to talk about this. And, you know, at Duke, this is an algorithm we've built into our prostate cancer screening. So, so it's, it's age uh, uh, sort of associated levels to really help people understand that this doesn't mean you have cancer, but you may be at higher risk for developing it. We want to make sure you stay on track with your regular checkups and PSA screening if you fall into one of those categories. And Dr. George, any final message for men or their loved ones about prostate cancer? Any one piece of information you would like them to take away from our conversation? Don't be afraid of prostate cancer. I, I know cancer in general people are scared of, but don't be afraid of prostate cancer. What you should be afraid of is not knowing what's happening in your body. The most important thing you can have is, is knowledge of what's going on. And, and we are we are, we are partners with our patients in helping them make decisions that are right for them. Not everybody needs surgery. Not everybody needs treatment. 
but everybody who has prostate cancer ought to know it. And so the, the most important thing you can do is, is, is go get screened. And, and it'll give you peace of mind. Most patients don't have prostate cancer. So the screening for most people is just reassuring. And if you do, well, that's important to know. And we can help you manage that on your terms. Dr. George, thanks so much for your time today and sharing information about Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. And that'll do it for this episode of This Month in Health. I'm Liz Ortiz.